Hi, everyone, and welcome to the 2020 Crossing Over Artist Talks. I'm Danielle Passwaters, Gallery Manager and Curator for the UWM Union Art Gallery. Thank you all for coming to show support for these ambitious UWM artists. We are so grateful to be able to host this talk and are looking forward to hearing more about these artists and their practice. The Crossing Over exhibition is our annual exhibition showcasing work created by undergraduate students of UWM's Peck School of the Arts Department who have received scholarships and or fellowship awards in 2020. Many of these students received these awards in connection with the first year uh, experience exhibition which was hosted at the end of the spring semester. I just wanna say congratulations to you all. I hope everyone has had a chance to check out the virtual exhibition on our website, but if not, we will put a link to that in the comment section and you can hop on over there afterwards and check that out. Uh, look over some of the images and read a little more about each student. Um, make sure to follow the students on social media too. And if you'd like to purchase any of their work on display, you can reach out to them directly. Christmas is coming after all. Uh, we will put a link to the virtual exhibition in the comments section. A recorded version of this artist talk will be available on our website and through our YouTube channel. The Union Art Gallery's mission as an art space dedicated to the exhibition of diverse contemporary art is to present a broad range of visual art by exhibiting works in all media by local, regional, and national emerging and established artists. In addition, we pride ourselves on being an accessible space for UWM students, artists to exhibit and learn. Our goals are to bring outstanding contemporary art to the UWM campus community, to reflect the diversity of the university and greater Milwaukee communities, to connect the university and the public through relevant art and cultural programs, and to support student emerging and established artists by providing opportunities for the creation and exhibition of cutting edge visual art. In addition, to the UW, in addition to the UWM Union Art Gallery, in addition, the UWM Art Gallery supports Black Lives Matter. Please visit our Black Lives Matter resource page for access to resources designed primarily for white and non-black allies to educate oneself on issues of racism and oppression. We have also included links to take action, including further information on local Black artists and Black-owned businesses to support. We are nearing the end of this 2020 year, and I'm sure I'm not the only one getting a bit of Zoom fatigue. So in order to spice things up a bit, we decided to organize this artist talk similar to a Pecha Kucha. So this will be a fast paced and fun virtual version of the crossing over talks. The artists will be discussing their work, their work, practice and inspirations in 30 second bursts, totaling five minutes each artist. We have four student artists speaking tonight and because this will be fast paced event, I will introduce them up front. First to speak will be Carly Yanoff, recipient of the sophomore scholarship competition, followed by Kelsey Barlow, also a recipient of the sophomore scholarship competition. Then we will hear from Emily Levac, recipient of the junior scholarship competition. And last to present will be Hunter Lewis, who is also a recipient of the junior scholarship competition. If y'all have any questions, please feel free to put them in the comment section and we will have some time at the end to go over those. And at that, I will turn it over. Okay, hi. So my name is Carly Anoff and I'm a junior in the DVC program. I'm from here in Milwaukee. So I really love the art community here. <laughs> Um, I'm going to be talking first about two of, uh, I guess, my inspirations for my talk. I wanted to focus on my digital practice in political and social movements. And so my first slide coming up here is going to be what I personally think is the most important art piece of our generation, and that is the climate change clock. Um, this is highlighting that we have seven years until a irreversible climate disaster. And I think this is really what's driving me 
to want to do something with my design work and want to design with a purpose and for a movement. And so I think this is one of those pieces that it's going to be in history books and we're going to say, why did nobody talk about this? So on top of that, my other inspiration is I wanted to put this resource out there. This is amplifier.org and this is a um, website that's nonprofit and you can download free art here. So they put out an artist call and artists submit their work. It's a great resource for if you're going to an event and you want posters or if you want signage in your house. It's a really great resource for artists and you can participate in their artist calls. So I wanted to talk about my experience working as a volunteer designer for an organization called Future Coalition. And Future Co Coalition is a nonprofit that connects over 100 youth-led organizations, including March for Our Lives, Student Art Spaces, Youth Climate Action Team, the Ocean Project, and 50 Miles More. So I work as kind of an on-call designer. So I'll get a text one night that says, hey, we have a Jumbotron spot tomorrow at this football game and we need a design. I'll get a brand book and I'll produce something within the night. So these are some examples of work I've done for 50 miles more, including a geo filter for a March and business cards. So a lot of it is really great practice for me as a designer, because like I said, I am producing work that's not necessarily something unique to me but I'm practicing a lot of those basic design skills of getting a brand book and then collaborating with a team to come up with something that fits their brand and something that's effective to um, convey their message. So here's another example of, this is a slide I had to brand really quickly for um, a presentation they had the next day where they were asking for a grant. And so I got on with the team, we were in a Google document and they said, here's our brand book, this is what we're looking for, and then we kind of worked on it to find something that fit their needs. Um, and then this is just one last example, that's a screenshot of their Instagram. So like I said, a lot of it is very simple. It's working with the basics of typography and design to really hone in on those skills and it gives me great experience working on a team. So this is just another example of that. Yes, yeah, smart designs help movements become succe succeed. Um, and I think something that's so interesting to me right now is the use of social media is really creating a platform for designers. Oh, sorry. Okay. Um, this I also wanted to highlight. I've gotten some really cool opportunities to have photographs featured in Teen Vogue, Bustle, Glamour Magazine, and Elite Daily. And that's just kind of a perk, I guess, of, you know, you go to events, you get involved, and then um, you have, I guess, this portfolio of work that you're able to use for future projects as well. So you kind of make your own stock photography. Um, so like I said, I really think that it, we're in an interesting age of how Instagram is highlighting a lot of artists and a lot of different styles. So I really like to play around with um, Instagram posts and making graphics for stories and such because you kind of get to play around with a different style of illustration. And I feel personally, I have been quite landed on what my style is. So I've played around with typography, which is what I did with this one, Immigrant Rights and Human Rights. This one I did recently highlighting how we had a historic youth voter turnout this last election. This was kind of a faux block print that I did um, that was suggested because they've been working with a lot of graphics highlighting how this election was historic in a lot of ways. Um, and I think it's also really interesting in this platform to be able to reflect on yourself and grow as a person besides an artist. You can think, um, where do I have a platform and where is my voice important, as well as making sure that you're providing a platform for those who might not have a voice. And so this is my last one. This is Climate Comes First. This is highlighting how Joe Biden is dedicating his first 100 days in office to climate change. Um, and so that's my last slide. So I want to thank everyone who put this talk together, all the organizers, and thank you all for this opportunity. Hi, um, my name is Kelsey. I'm currently halfway through my third year and I'm studying photography. Uh, I 
focus a lot on digital photography, but I've also kind of veered towards experimental photography, um, and I'm still kind of trying to find my place within that. Eventually, my hope career-wise is to photograph live events and performances and do kind of work like that. Um, so one of the themes that I've really been drawn to is feminism. I am a feminist, um, and I really wanted to play with the idea of gender roles and how in a stereotypical gender role, women do a lot of the work behind the scenes so that men can be the quote unquote breadwinners. Um, so that is something I wanted to focus on in this series and kind of show how it is almost like the male figure is domineering over the female figure as he is in the eyes of society, the more important one. Um, but a lot of times in this traditional way of thinking, um, of course, times have changed that a man would not be able to do half the things he did without the support of a woman. Um, I also focus a lot on body image in my work. I feel that beauty expectations are something that are very hurtful. And I like to play with that using makeup and lighting and Photoshop. So these two images show how that standard of beauty can make a lot of people feel like they have to wear a mask and like they have to hide. Um, I've also recently experimented with self-portraiture. It is not my favorite to do, but I find that the turnout of it is always something that I really like. Um, this series, I put myself into one of my favorite virtual realities, um, the Netflix series Big Mouth. I wanted to play with that awkwardness and put my coming of age story into that constructive atmosphere. I've also done a lot of work with the relationship between myself and time. Um, I always feel like deadlines are catching up to me and I'm always so stressed out. So I feel like this series really shows how time is chasing me so much that eventually I am nothing but time. Um, and these are also the three images I used for the crossing over exhibition. Um, I really like how they turned out. <laughs> um, I have done experimental photography too, working in the dark room. Um, I've really grown to love processes like cyanotype, Van Dyke Brown, um, and I've used other chemical processes such as solar fast um, and working with gel transfers. Um, and also alternative image capture methods. Um, so these are two from a series I did using the same image 20 different ways. These two are also that. Um, how I did to capture the image is I put an object onto a flatbed scanner and I moved it along with the scanner. Um, and I feel like it's so interesting the ways that you can capture an image without actually using a camera. And that's something I really liked playing with and that I wanna continue playing with in the future. Um, this is the largest project I've ever done. It is a twin sized comforter quilted. Um, I use that solar fast chemical process, which it's basically just one formula you can paint onto paper or fabric and then expose. Um, I designed some monsters and then I took images of some places that I find to be frightening and I printed them onto fabric and sewed them all together. Um, I wanted to put com discomforting images on a comfort item. I'm also super fascinated with antiques. Um, I went to two antique shops over the course of a few weeks and I collected a bunch of images and I took images there also and I bound them into books. Um, and I did this because I feel like mortality is something I'm concerned with a lot and I don't want to be forgotten. Like I want life to mean something. And I feel like these images were left behind and forgotten for me to find. So in these books I expressed 
that struggle. Um, that is about it. Thank you all. And thank you to everyone who put this together. Um, I'm still finding my place in art and all of that, but I just really am glad I had the opportunity to show this experimentation. Hi, uh, my name is Emily and I'm currently a senior graduating in May with a bachelor's in fine arts and art with an emphasis in photography and imaging. Um, a lot of my work revolves around analog and alternative process photography, as well as making a few artist books, which is something that I kind of just started doing. Um, and I'm really mostly interested in the landscape and the self and mental illness. Um, so that brings me to my first artist book. And this book is about death, about the wait for death and the mental disarray that follows when you wait for death. Um, and I had made this um, using the alt process um, called Van Dyke, which gives it that really uh, rich brown color. Um, so what I had done was um, you would put a various amount of chemicals onto the paper um, and then you would put the film or something transparent or something um, to imprint on that Van Dyke. Um, but what I did was I shot images digitally and then made um, something called uh, Pictorico. Um, and then, so that mimicked kind of like the negative film. So I put that onto that chemical page. Um, you can either put these um, outside underneath the sunlight, or we have this little thing called the UV easy bake oven thing that we have in the lab. Um, so that just emits UV light. Um, so then once that's done, you would take it out, um, you would do the final fixing, um, and then you were left with this really, really rich brown color. Um, and then to stitch it, I made it really loose, um, but also really tight. So the book, you can't open very much. Um, and it's, so it's, it's very fragile um, and very um, delicate. And I had done different um, techniques when applying the Van Dyke. So I either smeared it or I quickly put it on. Um, but yeah, so that takes me to uh, my second uh, artist book, Deterioration. Um, this book is about the weight of depression and the deterioration of the mind and body as it goes through a relapse. Um, and these are made, or this is made um, using uh, lumen prints, um, which has like light sensitive paper. Um, you would put um, chemicals or you can print something on it. You can make an image with it as well, just like the Van Dyke. Um, but what I had done was put um, various amount of household chemicals um, taking this outside and you have to work kind of fast because um, the light is affecting it as soon as it hits that sunlight. Um, I covered it in mud, buried it in the ground, I stomped on it, I left it in the rain, I just did anything to really deteriorate um, the book. Um, from there I then threaded it um, with the black red. I also um, included bits of my hair into it. So this made it kind of difficult because the thread is going through the entire book. So it's going through each page up and around. Um, so not only did I have to thread that with the hair, I also had to thread that with the, um, the thread, um, which made it really difficult and very small opening again, again, like three inches. And when you get to the binding, um, it, was, it was very difficult to get into there. Um, but this book is, is ephemeral. Um, so that means it, it fades. Then this brings me to um, my in progress um, untitled senior thesis work. Um, and these images represent the in between where contemplation and indecisiveness leaves me within the duality of choosing between life or death and letting go or staying still. Um, these were shot using the RB67. So it gives me um, film that's about six by seven. So I'm able to um, chemically alter the, the silver on that film. Um, and I, I do this using two different techniques. So I either shoot the roll of film and throw that roll undeveloped into the chemicals and then go and develop it. Or I develop the roll and I put the um, sheets of film into the chemicals. Um, they give it kind of a similar look, but the, the second um, <clears throat> way that I do it gives it um, a more smeared, a more um, textured look, um, which is something that I really like. Um, and there's, 
there's an interesting uh, duality or interaction happening with the photographed landscape and the new chemical landscape on top kind of like that physical representation of that in between where I find myself spending a lot of time um, contemplating and spending. Um, uh, yeah, these images just, they're so fun to experiment with and you know, all that good stuff. Um, and lastly, I included some influences. So for all of these bodies of work, these two artists in particular really influenced the way that I viewed paper and images as objects. Um, and how alternative process or manipulation in film can change or direct the narrative. So I really love Georgina Rascala. She brings forth um, the thought of objectivity and uh, objectivity in photography and the way light and shadows interact with the paper and the image. And I also really love Bridget Kahn um, with her chemograms too. Um, thank you. Hello, everybody. My name is Hunter Lewis. I'm a senior art and design student here at Peck School of the Arts with an emphasis in print and narrative forms. My practice at the moment is typified by figural illustrations based in humor and caricature. However, for this presentation, I'm going to walk you through my pieces that are in crossing over and just sort of the way I've built towards where I am right now. So the first piece that we see is skin mask replica. This is the oldest piece I have that's in crossing over right now. Um, this, this print is one of the first times that I felt like I had found the medium that was right for what I was doing, which is screen printing. Um, I fell in love with the process and the translation from digital to a physical piece. Um, so the composition for Skin Mask Replica is a digital collage that I made up um, by cutting apart in Photoshop pictures that I had inherited from my sister recently before this piece was made, as well as handwritten poetry that I would use as like an image within the composition. Um, I used this piece to explore the feelings that I had and have about my family and the dynamic we have following my mom's death when I was 14. Um, and it kind of just serves as a reminder that despite what I've been through, what I've been through and everything, um, I'm still part of my family. So the next piece is from Within the Machine. It's an artist book. It's screen printed as well. The main purpose of this was to combat the idea that I myself am a machine. Uh, low feelings and being spread too thin were really a motivation for me making this. The text is written through a process called diastic poetry which kind of breaks apart words and rearranges them. Um, and I thought it was fun because when you read it, you sound like you're a broken machine trying to communicate something. I paired this with drawings from anatomical diagrams as well as um, mechanical drawings that you would find in an engineering setting. Um, and I thought that the combination really served to communicate uh, uh, not being able to decipher your own thoughts or where you're at in life, which is how I was feeling at this moment when I made it. Um, this next piece is markably lighter. It's Milwaukee Zine Fest. It's a poster made for Milwaukee Zine Fest, which ultimately went on to be canceled because of the pandemic. Um, I created this piece under the tutelage of Adam Beadle, who was a grad student that graduated last spring. He's a wonderful letterpress printer. Check him out if you have the time. Um, this poster kind of served as the pivot point away from the past two pieces that you saw, uh, more towards what I'm doing right now. So here you can see it's some in progress, like the sketch and the carving. It's very caricature based, very character based. Um, they're based off of Adam, me, and Bailey Dons, who's another crossing over artist. I think the combination of the zany text and the caricature illustrations created a fun atmosphere and kind of got me excited to do more of their, this work going forward. Here we have two of my main inspirations in the work I'm doing right now. On the left, you have Jay Ryan, who's a screen printer in Chicago. Um, I, I really like the graphic quality of his work and just how simple and fun it is. And then on the right, we have Jamie Hewlett, who is the illustrator that did Gorillas and Tank Girl. I really like his line work and just the essence of the characters and the humor that he brings to his drawings. So here you can see two posters that I've made this semester for um, 
just just making them. Um, and my my focus this semester was really just to have fun with what I was doing. I'm pushing myself in composition. I'm pushing myself to use more colors, just more technique. Um, and this is to make my stories and characters more dynamic, not only for the viewers, but to keep things fresh for myself as well as I continue to develop. Um, here are some work in progress drawings and some sketches. This semester, as we transition out and into the next semester, I want to focus on the repeatability of characters just so that I can work to develop um, more fleshed out narratives and I hope to do graphic stories with some of these characters um, going forward. So thank you for listening. Um, thank you all for attending and showing up to support these amazing artists. Just a reminder to visit the virtual exhibition. The link is in the comments section and can also be accessed through our website. Thank you to the students for all their hard work and thank you to Peck School of the Arts for your ongoing dedication to collaborating with the Union Art Gallery on all of these amazing annual student exhibitions. Thank you all for coming.